hello and welcome to this week's live kind of sort of weekly warm-up timeline fun stuff that we're doing. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of what we did last week where instead of doing the sort of traditional live weekly warm-up where I go over just one exercise and sort of talk you through it and explain how to do it and get the most out of it, instead of that I am going through one session from one of the timelines from the next generation clarinet method. So I'm just going to keep going sort of linearly through the the timeline that I was on, I'm on sort of the more intermediate uh, level timeline, the mastery timeline, where it's all about mastering the fundamentals and getting the clarinet playing going really well before the final advanced timeline, which is all about applying that good clarinet playing. Uh, but this has been a lot of fun. Last week it was, was pretty fun. Uh, and I also should say that I've decided a few things that I want to share with you and make sure that you know about. So first, I am. I think I'm just going to do these timeline sessions uh, each week in place of the live weekly warm up until I'm done with the mastery timeline. Um, from there, I may go back to the normal live weekly warm up, or maybe I'll go on to another timeline if that's something you all would be interested in seeing. Um, hopefully, this has been really helpful if you own the next generation clarinet method, and even if you don't own it, uh, hopefully this is helpful to sort of see how I practice and see a more structured sort of practice session. Uh, this way as well. So the last thing and the second thing that I want to make sure that everybody is aware of is I've been doing a very special bonus when you get the next generation clarinet method. Uh, I've been giving a free mini strategy session. Uh, the strategy session, the mini strategy session is really fun where you get to submit uh, videos and or recordings of your playing and then I'm filling out a sort of PDF template that I have that's called the transformation game plan where it sort of goes over your strengths, your weaknesses, uh, and those kinds of things and helps you to... Yeah, hopefully I'm back. I'm um, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, I just had a thing on my phone that told me it was going to cut me off from, from streaming. <laughs> uh, but I think we're good to go, so I won't get interrupted anymore. So yes, the mini strategy session is a limited time offering as a bonus. Um, as you can imagine, I spend a good amount of time listening to your recordings, coming up with like the most targeted and directed and actionable things that will help you. And then I give you that game plan with game plan with your strengths, your weaknesses, the opportunities for improvement, the exercises to do to get that improvement and some musical pieces that you can do to work on those improvements and sort of test yourself to see if you've made those improvements. So it's a decent amount of time and work, so I can't offer that all the time. Uh, and the important announcement is that I'm going to be concluding that a week from today on Monday, January 24th, 2022. So if you're watching this before that date, you don't already own the Next Generation Clarinet Method, go to quickstartclarinet.com slash nextgenbook. You can get the amazing method program that I'm working through here today and also get a bonus mini strategy session. So be sure to take advantage of that if you haven't already. So getting into today's strategy session, uh, this is, or no, it's not strategy session, <laughs> that's the bonus, today's timeline session. Uh, I'm gonna start by setting my timer for 15 minutes. It's just one session, approximately 15 minutes is what I recommend. It's okay if it goes a little bit over, um, but don't feel like you need to spend more than 15 minutes per day, at least for this timeline. So now I'm going to look at what it is. So it's page 14, the diatonic finger flexibility, number three, expanding from C, and number four, expanding from A. And the purpose in the timeline says, now that you are thinking more about great tone, the next thing you will need is agile, precise fingers to move that great tone from note to note. As you practice, these exercises really work to maintain the best sound that you can while coordinating the fingers in a relaxed way to move effortlessly through these note patterns. Challenge yourself to keep your fingers relaxed and as close to the keys as possible. Great. Now I'll pull up the book. What was that page? Page 14. And let's do it. So expanding from C and expanding from A. These are finger flexibilities. Um, so it's lots and lots of repeats. Of course, those instructions are included in the book. Let me move my camera a little bit too so you can maybe see my fingers a little bit. That works. <laughs>
So as I'm doing this, I'm focusing on great sound, as the instructions said, and relaxed fingers, but not just relaxing the fingers that are moving, of course that's very important, but also relaxing all the other fingers. So I noticed as I was doing that C to B, like this motion was going really well, but I was starting to sort of squeeze and get tense there, so I'm trying not to do that, of course. Okay, moving on. I also highly recommend doing this with the metronome. I'm sort of just working on my own internal study beat, um, because the metronome can sometimes be obnoxious over the video, uh, but do it with a metronome if you're doing this on your own. As we get to these bigger intervals, making sure that the the distance between the notes doesn't impact the quality of sound between them. Also making sure to not get any of those extra notes or that extra junk between the notes. Um, I'm also practicing my circular breathing. You may have noticed that or seen that. Um, you probably heard that it sounded bad at the very least. Um, but this is a great example of where the fingers are pretty good uh, and circular breathing is something else I want to improve so I can sort of make it a little bit more advanced or challenging as I'm working through these super simple exercises just to keep myself engaged. But good sound quality, relaxed, controlled fingers are the top priorities. So that's the expanding from C exercise. Uh, now for the expanding from A. This one's a little bit trickier, uh, but will be a good one to really watch the, the finger coordination and get that going really, really well.
one bonus thing while you're working on this A stuff, especially make sure that by pressing the A key, it's not making the clarinet wiggle around in your mouth and that you have total stability between your top teeth and the embouchure and the right thumb really holding the clarinet firmly in place um, without this impacting things and making this just a nice minimal motion without being wiggling the whole instrument around. The Saber of Fire, that's your name. <laughs> thanks thanks so much for the videos, they're a big help. I'm glad that these are helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching them. It's, it's always fun to get to share my knowledge and, and hopefully it is helpful for all of you. This one A to F is really tricky. I'm probably gonna be doing this one for a little while to really get the coordination of coming off of the A key and landing on the F hole at exactly the same time. This one's also really hard for the clarinet stability because when our thumb's on the hole, like we have both thumbs supporting, that's one feeling of stability. We have both thumbs sort of pushing up. And then as we press the A key, that's a very different sense of stability because we no longer have the left thumb supporting and we also have the first finger pushing down. So we go from sort of easily pushing up this way to now pushing down. Uh, so we have to sort of combat that with the, the right thumb and try to make these fingers as light as possible and not <laughs> making the clarinet wiggle back and forth. like a tongue twister. I can do it uh, for a little bit, but but as I do it a longer time, it's, it's harder, but I'm going to go on for now.
as I'm doing this with lots and lots of repetitions at the faster and faster speed, I'm starting to sort of lose concentration a little bit, I think because I've been going for a while now. Um, and also, I just, like, there's something there that's not clean, but I can't quite pinpoint it at the faster speed. So what I might do is record it going at the fast speed and then slow it down and listen back and I bet I would hear something really obvious um, if I were to do that. I probably will make a note of that here at the end of the, the session to do that. Uh, and then we're on to the very last exercise here for this session or the last measure of the exercise uh, which is the A to C. Like when I start going fast my fingers get really floppy so I'm going to try to work on being really snappy but relaxed uh, at the slower speed and then translating that to faster. at that speed. Uh, quick disclaimer about this is you definitely don't have to go that fast. Oh, there's my timer. Excellent. Uh, you definitely don't have to go that fast as you're doing these exercises. Uh, I was sort of just pushing the tempo um, just to sort of see, and, and that's a perfect example of if these exercises feel very easy for you, uh, the two things I would recommend is First of all, going for better quality. So if you feels easy and you're like, oh yeah, this is super easy. I can go from A to C no problem, but if the sound quality is bad and there's all that extra junk in between, uh, then you're not getting really the best quality that you want. Uh, even though these exercises are kind of boring or at least very simple and not very musical, you want to play them in such a way that if this measure showed up in a piece of music, like that's how beautifully and in control and perfectly you would want to play it in your music. So that's something that I definitely recommend. Um, then if the quality is good, then you can work on speeding it up and pushing the tempo as fast as you can get. Uh, it's always good to push your comfort zone a little bit, but don't live in an uncomfortable place. Uh, spend the majority of the time comfortable and then push it a little bit. So I'm going to fill out my sort of, uh, reflection now, or my progress section. Yeah, the Saber of Fire says, I've worked on my tone, but I'm starting to work on getting faster. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, with going faster, try to go gradually. I was sort of jumping up speeds in this, uh, which works if it's something you're comfortable with, uh, but make sure that you're not jumping to such a fast speed that it's not comfortable and as much as you can maintain the quality. Quality is always more important than speed, but that's excellent that you're, you got the, this quality and now you can go for the speed a bit, yeah. Um, great, so for my progress, I'm going to say, let's see, I'm gonna mark the date that I did this. Uh, and then I'm also going to say that I think for the purposes of, of demonstrating, I'll go on to the next session for next time. Uh, I think as we go, we're going to get into more interesting stuff to watch and listen to. I imagine this isn't particularly entertaining to listen to me do these repetitions, but you can see that it's important and I really do them. Uh, and what I'm going to make a note of is uh, try recording and slowing it down. So that's something that I can do. Um, and another way to improve this. Uh, I'm going to, I probably would do another repetition on this, especially uh, the expanding from A exercise, especially uh, is really tricky. So I'm just gonna make a note of that. The A key stuff is great for working on coordinating the transitions. Um, 
and the stability of the instrument. It's great for stability. Because uh, if you can go relatively fast and really get that sort of... Or even the hardest one, I think, might have been... If I can keep the stability of the instrument while doing something really extreme like that, then it's gonna set me up for great success in all of the other technical stuff that I need to tackle. So that those are my sort of progress notes. Uh, like I said, maybe off camera, I'll do another session on this. Um, with the sessions, it's sort of, you have these different blocks in the timelines, but you're welcome and encouraged to do those blocks many, many, many times. Um, so I think for this one, I probably would do another session. I won't demonstrate that next week, just so you don't have to listen to me do a whole, whole bunch more. Uh, and we'll go on to the next uh, session so you can see how that works. But I imagine there will be some that'll be a little more entertaining to listen to that I will want to do uh, multiple sessions. So we might run into that as we go. So Thanks for hanging out, uh, especially for the people who've watched through this whole thing and sat through me wiggling those fingers so much. Uh, you can see that it's really important and it's it's really what we do to practice and, and make the clarinet sound good. So I encourage you to do that as well. Uh, thanks for liking the video. Definitely leaving a like lets me know that this is interesting for you. Uh, and definitely, even if you're not watching this live, uh, feel free to comment any questions that you have or if you're liking it or if there's anything that you'd like me to do differently. Um, uh, to make this more beneficial for you, feel free to let me know. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week as we move on to the next session in the timeline.